British offshore legend Dee Kafari became the only female skipper of this edition when she accepted the challenge of creating the first team in the Volvo Ocean Race's history to have an equal number of men and women on board. And the majority of her sailors are under 30 years of age. Amplifying the UN's Clean Seas campaign and backed by key partners such as the Murray Purry Foundation, Turn the Tide on Plastic Fast became a crowd favourite with messages surrounding inclusivity and gender and age. With very little time to prepare ahead of the start line in Alicante, Turn the Tide on Plastic made it clear that their intention wasn't just to sail the course, but to challenge for the lead. After finding their feet in the first few legs, the daunting challenge of leg three, Cape Town to Melbourne, lay ahead. For Dee, leading an inexperienced crew, the main priority was safety. And with 75% of her team having never sailed in the Southern Ocean before, the pressure was on. I'm very fortunate in six, well, five laps of the planet, I've had five successful roundings, but uh, this would be number six. And I think the buzz I get now will be seeing those faces of the crew rounding Cape Horn for the first time. I mean, to take people there and to make it happen. On the legs, they were often in the top three, at times leading, but they still failed to see the results that reflected their hard work. It wasn't until leg six, from Hong Kong to Auckland, when things started to look up. With two navigators on board, the team sailed down the coast of New Zealand in a comfortable third place behind Team Axon Abel and Sun Hung Kai Scallywag. In one of the most excruciating moments of the race, the world watched as the two red boats closed down their 100-mile deficit to the leading group and snatched away the podium glory and leaving Turn the Tide on Plastic in fifth place. Their best result so far, but Dee and her team were devastated. Yeah, I mean, we had a good race and uh, we thought we were going to have a better result. Um, but those pesky red boats always seem to get it their way. The Turn the Tide on Plastic message soon became a global one, aiming to encourage people to change their behaviour towards single-use plastic and marine pollution and endeavouring to lead and inspire lasting changes in addressing the crisis of plastic pollution in our oceans. And we have a series of filters that it runs through and every two days we change those filters, store them in an airtight container, seal them, date them and together with the GPS reading on the um, science project itself, they go back to GMR in Germany and they analyse it and count the microplastics. They actually see the harsh reality of how many microplastics there are in our oceans. Sadly, we've done this now right from the very beginning and sadly, even in the remotest parts of the Southern Ocean, on Lake 3, we've seen that microplastics exist. From Auckland onwards, the appetite for a podium position was palpable. On leg 7, they were again in third before problems with their rig slowed their progress. The team made repairs and pushed on, but they slipped to fourth. A new benchmark for their scorecard, and Dee Kafari was delighted with the progress her team was making, especially on a leg as tough as this one. It made me realise that they had just realised that they'd sailed the toughest leg and finished in fourth place. And um, they deserve all the credit they can get because they did it well. I was very proud. With the Southern Ocean legs completed, the team started leg eight on top form. The first seven days at sea saw navigator Nico Lundvin's strategic brilliance take Turn the Tide on Plastic to the lead, where a drag race formed as the boats left the doldrums. Now that the tactics had all played out, it would come down to pure speed. Over 2,000 nautical miles of straight line racing, the chasing pack pushed Dee Kafari and her crew back into sixth place. The team knew they had not yet shown their true form, and with the last two legs of the race, it offered an opportunity. On leg 10, the team rounded the southeastern tip of Ireland in sixth. As the wind shifted and created a high speed drag race, Turn the Tide on Plastic found the speed that had eluded them before. They closed up to the pack, but could only move up to fifth before the finish line appeared all too soon. The final leg wouldn't be easy, but Turn the Tide on Plastic was not the same team that started the race. Turn the Tide on Plastic claimed fifth spot into The Hague, completing the lap of the planet, a euphoric moment for both Skipper and all of her young squad. Tied on points in the overall standings, all eyes were on Turn the Tide on Plastic in the Brunel import race in The Hague, needing to beat David Whitson Hunkai Scallywag by two places in order to secure sixth overall in the ocean standings. After starting well, Turn the Tide on Plastic slipped behind the Scallywags and the pressure was on. But when David Witt's team became entangled with a turning mark, Dee Kafari capitalised, holding on and finally claiming a well-deserved sixth overall.